Pico Island in the Azores is a very special destination because it was named after its tallest mountain. My name is Rui and I'm here to guide you through the Azores. We're in the island of Pico, one of the islands in the central group of the archipelago of the Azores, more precisely in the village of Madalena. Madalena is one of the main villages of the island of Pico. It was once a very prosperous village because of the straight contact it had with the neighbor island, Fayal. Behind me we have the main church of Madalena. This church was built on top of a previous little hermitage and it was refurbished later on and the 19th century facade that you see shows well the importance that the locals give to religion. If you're isolated in the Atlantic for centuries and you are vulnerable to everything that nature gives you, of course your relation with the divine grows stronger and stronger. We're off to the Whalers Museum. I'm Anna. I work at the Whalers Museum in Lajes do Pico, Azores. Uh, this is um, uh, a sanctuary of the whale hunt in the Azores. And this museum was opened in 1988. Here we can see a whaling boat um, which was used and whale hunting. Uh, whale hunting activity lasted in the Azores for a century and a half and it, um, it was brought here by the influence of the American whaling boats which would stop in the islands for fresh food, fresh water and also new men. The idea of the museum started in the 60s by the whalers themselves when they noticed the activity was decreasing. For most of the time during that activity the only part of the whale that was uh, used was the blubber to get the oil. That was the main product removed from the, the whale. The only species of whale hunted here in the Azores was the sperm whale. The sperm whale itself has uh, one third of its body uh, is the head, which, is, which contains an oil called the spermaceti oil. That was also uh, used uh, for different things than the regular whale oil. It has better properties and it was sold by a higher price. Also the meat and the bones were used after that to make uh, flowers either for fertilizers or animal meals. The museum itself has all the instruments used in the hunting and the cutting of the whale. We have a scrimshaw room with um, scrimshaws from the 18th, 19th century, also 20th. Uh, and we also have an ethnographic room because besides being the whalers, they all had activities in the shore. So right behind me, we have a, a, a Nazorian whale boat. It's, an, uh, it's different from the American whale boat because we had a shore hunt. So the whalers had to go from the shore to the sea, closer to the whales, sometimes five, six miles from the coast to hunt them and then tow them back to the shore. This boat uh, used to take seven sailors, um, the official and then six rowers. The front rower was the harpooner. When they approached the whale, he would keep his row away and stand up, um, place his knee on the front board and then harpoon the whale. The harpoon does not kill the whale. The harpoon is attached to a line of 400 meters long. It only attaches the whale to the boat. As she's hurt, she won't have so much velocity. The Whalers Museum purpose is to show everybody how the whaling activity fitted into a time and a place. It was dying out by itself. In the 60s, there was a lot of uh, an immigration outbreak a lot of people going to the States or to Canada. So here we are still close to Madalena in this area with magnificent rock formations. The way it looks around us shows that one of the eruptions that formed this area must have been very effusive, very liquid, and we can see that by the formations that are all around these ribbon-shaped kind of lava structures. Pico is one of the islands where you find the youngest rock formations. These boulders that you see around were used for hundreds of years to build magnificent vineyard structures. This rocky area that you see 
tells us that Pico was and is one of the islands that has the youngest rock formations. This beautiful windmill sits in the middle of a wine vineyard. This is the patrimonial UNESCO World Heritage Site of winemakers and of course Fig Grappa is their specialty. These volcanic black stones were used to build the old wine village. These are the distilleries. This is also part of the World Heritage Site, not only the facilities itself, but the surrounding village called Lagido. These distilleries can be used by locals. All they have to do is reserve a day, book a day, they pay a certain amount, and they can bring in their own grapes and produce their own grappa. One of these distilleries working and it's composed by what we call a kind of an oven and you've got this structure, a copper structure, where they put in the grapes with a bit of its juice, moshtu, that's the Portuguese word. They light it up and then, of course, it will heat up and the serpentine is in cold water. And of course there's condensation and coming out we have, for the first time, what they call locally agua fraca, agua branda, that's the word. And this agua branda, the wheat water, as we can call it, uh, is put in again. They will wash the copper brand. It's put in again and it's distilled twice and then it is bottled. Wine grappa is the most traditional one, but in Pico they have an exquisite product, which is fig grappa. This is the fig grappa. And is this from last season? Uh, this one is last year's stock. Well, I'm going to taste this because I'm so excited. You know, to be here on this wonderful island. He'll knock his socks off. Salud. <laughs> this is a dramatic sunset in the winemaker's village. People enter in this center and they are welcomed. My name is Maria João. I coordinate uh, Gruta das Torres, which is the longest Slavic tube known in Portugal. It was discovered uh, around 20 years ago and, um, and it's nowadays, since 2005, open to the public. We enter in the cave uh, through a skylight, which is basically the a hole left by the breakdown of the roof of the cave. So there we enter, we start to go down for 100 steps in stairs and we can, everybody can experience the difference in temperature, the difference in the different worlds, the underworld and the surface world. And there is a transition world which we experience um, the temperature is different, the humidity is different, the vegetation starts to get completely different until we get no vegetation, no light at all. In each tour, there is a, a group of only 15 people that can go together for safety reasons. Because there is only one guide going with the group, basically you have to take a helmet and a flashlight. A lavic tube is just what it's left of an old river of lava in which the, we can say the crust of this river, the outside layer contacting the, the air became, uh, became solid first. Inside all the fluid lava kept on flowing towards the ocean and left an empty, a hollow tube. We can see stalactites, volcanic stalactites, stalagmites, which are the, de it is the deposition of little drops of lava dropping from the ceiling. This cave is part of the natural park, was classified as a natural monument in 2004. And uh, the whole cave, even at, at the surface, the whole floor at the surface is protected once this whole area belongs to the natural park of Pico Islands in the Azores. We are visiting the island of San Miguel and it's the largest of the islands in the Azores and it's dotted with flowers. This is the village of Ribera Grange and St. Miguel, and it's a quaint village that has an old stone bridge that connects the town.
This parish church is a Portuguese design. The church of Jesus de Pedro is ringing its bell of glory. Vá para o outro lado, vá para o outro lado, vá para o outro lado. Uh, uh, está quieta, está quieta. Está quieta, está, está quieta. Trata de comer. É. Não verá sol que aí encerra. Bebo as rimas deste canto. É que ele se calhar vai ser. Nada a ver. Agora já me dê que jeito. O meu prato. <risos> <laughs> yeah, 95 percent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Five percent right. is life. <laughs> Taste yes. the milk. Yeah. Thank you, Cal. <laughs> so we're in São Miguel on the southwest side of São Miguel in the parish of Ginetes. This little parish has a small population that. Most of uh, the people that live here are dedicated to farming. Those that visit the Azores can experience several different kinds of activities. They can go out and experience a nature active sport, canyoning, sailing, or for example, uh, try uh, a day activity on how to live the life of an Azorean the way it used to be in the 19th century. In this particular place, this old building represents an old house in which one side you had the kitchen and on the other you had what was the living room, the community room. This is an incredible experience. I'm here with Amelia Oliveira and she's going to teach me how to make bread in the traditional way of the Azorean fashion, is that correct? Yes. I'm so excited because this is, you know, I'm not a cook, but I'm going to learn so much. I just milked a cow for the first time. Oh, good. It's almost like, you know, that sort of thing which I had to learn. Now I have to learn how to bake. That's going to be This is different. different. It's different? Experience. Different fingers? Yes. Oh, okay, let's try it then. <laughs> Here we have the flour. Yes. Then we have salt. Mm -hmm. Those two ingredients are very important for bread. Mm -hmm. Here we have sugar mm -hmm. and yeast. Does that make it a very sweet bread or sort of a modest uh, no, taste? No, our bread. We use vinegar because at uh, so many years ago, the ladies just made bread one time a week. Do you use self-rising uh, flour or is it just regular flour? Regular. Ah, because I thought it was in, in modern times, I think they use self-rising flour to get the bread to rise, I think. Oh, that's easier. Wow, I'm working hard. I'll have to have a cocktail after this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a tea? <laughs> no, cocktail. <laughs> you make it so easy. It's easy. <laughs> so now we take the salt. And Just not the, the water. Right. The rocks stay here. Okay. You're going to do like me. This side. Did On you? this side, okay. And then I just, what do I have to do? Just mix, mix it all together? I can do this really quick. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> then which one was that? What was that that you just poured in? The sugar and this. Oh, the sugar. Now, how should the consistency look at this point? It's not right. Oh, there's more stuff. Okay. So the vinegar. The vinegar's in, okay. Oh, that's nice. You sort of mold it. It's almost like the way they do the pizza dough. It's kind almost. of. <laughs> Here we have a lot of fit. And so this is the we do when we do the bread. Right. We do in the name of God, Son. And the whole spirit. Ah, amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you must do that. Oh, yes. So it's a religious experience, too? No. It's like hitting a fat person. 
the Father, the Son, oh, what a mess. <laughs> Very good. The Holy Ghost, amen. <laughs> My prayers are not going to be answered because I'm making such a sloppy job. So I'm really on a farm today between the cow and the bread. <laughs> on, on the edge. Mm -hmm. Kind of made a moon. Here. Oh, a mold, okay. Are we going to use a little flower? A little more. A little more. <laughs> Turn. Turn. Mm -hmm. And go to the. Plop! Okay, that's it? <laughs> Just wait, then you grow okay. up. Oh, to I go see. to do Owen. Oh, okay. That's easy. E quando está a primeira fase, a gente tem que imaginar isso com o lume, pá. Que gostei mais está. The important part is uh, how, how to make the horseshoes, uh, which is not exclusive from, 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 from the Azores. Why do they show it here? Because, in fact, uh, the horse was uh, a best friend. At the beginning of times, when settlement started, the horse was not a working instrument. It was something so valuable that was, it was a, a, an issue of status. You know? Your position was defined in society by the presence of a horse. That, that's what made the difference between you and the, the, the peasant. But later on, the horses were important. Horses or donkeys or mules, they were very important working uh, fellows or, or, or collaborators, if we can say. So they had to be very well prepared. Now, you're in an island, you can't just go around and buy horseshoes. You had to make them. Making a basket is not that easy. Making a basket needs an art and it goes by sections. According to Mr. Salomão, for example, this particular part over here, this would give us the dimension of the basket. So this would be the bottom part. Then you would go into one of these phases, right, and this arch you would settle it to give you the size of the basket and then you would work on it with the willows that had been prepared previously. The baskets have specific, specific sizes and corresponded to specific measurements. So, for example, this would be what we call duas arrobas, and, uh, well, equivalent to 30 kilos. And uh, 30, two baskets of this, of potatoes, would be exchanged, imagined, for two baskets of something else from your neighbor. Tobacco was produced for personal consumption, but also to sell to the tobac factories. Começando pela semente, para teres uma ideia, e ficas, levanta a tua mão. Uh, isto é uma, para tu teres uma ideia, isto é das sementes mais miúdas do mundo. The seeds, uh -huh. some of the smallest seeds in the world come from tobacco. The seeds are planted, and then once the plant has grown for about the palm, it is transplanted. They dry it out, and then all the leaves are extracted. Now, on one same branch, there's different qualities, qualities in, in terms of standards. We would call this third quality tobacco, second quality tobacco, first quality tobacco. Then you get the leaf, and these leaves, they have the veins, and you have to take away the veins. This was a job done by the ladies. So all the tobacco leaves that were not sold out, they were not thrown away. They were tied up into this stick, into something that locally is known as roulard, that's the slang word for it. And they would go on and on and on until they filled up the stick, very tight together. And uh, you would take a piece out. This normally was a work that the men did at the end of the day. This was a kind of job that, was, uh, that men would do at the end of the day. So the corn leaves, once they harvested the corn, part of the leaves, the, the leaves that were not good were fed to the animals, but the good leaves were used to stuff in mattresses where you would lie down to sleep and or to do tobacco uh, paper. This becomes very, very thin. Oh, yes. Very thin. extremely thin. And it was also toilet paper. You see, 
and there's a, an easy Azorian cigarette. To finish. You just, you just need a hat and yeah. you would look like uh -huh. a, a Western cowboy. You can't do that on the camera. <laughs> so. St. Miguel is known as the Green Island and it's the largest and the most populated island in the Azores. I love this aerial view of the lake at Furnace. This mausoleum was styled as a cathedral and it faces the Furnace Lake. So this is the area of Caldedes. We're inside the crater of Furnas. And here you see secondary evidence of volcanism. This place is used to prepare one of the most traditional meals that you can find in São Miguel, which is the Cozido das Furnas. It's a, a special a uh, meal that we have in which we put a series of ingredients inside a pot and we put it under ground in a hole, we seal it and it cooks gently for six and a half to seven hours in its own juices. Now this is a tradition that has been going on, we know and it's written on history books, since the 17th century. Locals used to come here and they would use the heat from the ground to prepare their meal. Originally, codfish calderada, as we call it, was abundant. Uh, today, as codfish became more and more expensive and harder to get, uh, it's a combination of different kinds of meat. So this meal is prepared, you get a pan and you put potato, sweet potato, yams, colocausia, also known as colocausia, and uh, put it all in layers and then you put pork, beef, chicken, on top it takes spicy sausage, blood sausage or black pudding and then cabbage, green cabbage, white cabbage, carrots and you just put it there, you don't need to add anything else you pinch the uh, sausages and the blood sausage and then you seal it in the pan bring it here with a special cloth, put it all down this hole the hole has got one to one and a half meter and a concrete ring around it to avoid the hole to collapse Seven hours after, you come in, you dig it out, and it's ready to eat for all the family. We're on our way to Furnace Volcanic Hot Springs. The sulfur permeated the air. That's when I notice the smoke emanating from the rocks. As I stepped into the pool of rust-colored water, a spring of hot water poured into the pool then I began to relax. Several locals were also enjoying the experience. I felt the sensation of small bubbles under my feet. As I exit the pool, my feet were smaller. Perhaps if I stayed longer, I might have lost weight. Furnace is a wonderful experience. Fresh spring water is actually drinkable. Laurel and I grabbed a leaf and converted it into a cup and tasted it. This name of this factory is uh, Ceramic Vieira. My name is uh, Teresa. This factory this year is 150 years old. Everything uh, in this factory is make, made by hand. I make plates with the traditional designs. The traditional of this pottery, the colors is uh, blue and white. The ceramic Vieira is um, blue and white. The paintings here is for the expression of the, this island because you see that uh, everything here is a painting with the um, Lagoa do Fogo, Sete Cidades. 
The tea leaves are grown over lush emerald green hills on this estate without adding any pesticides. This tea factory is the only European tea plantation and the oldest remaining tea company that's family owned and operated since 1883. I'm here with my new friend, Rui Amen, and he has shown us the islands, four islands, very special. Coming to the Azores is just an incredible experience, something that I've never experienced before, and I am so glad that we had an introduction to name the islands that we visited. Well, uh, we started out in the island of Pico, then we went to, to Fayal, from there we flew into Terceira, and finally we're here in São Miguel. But imagine, everyone talks about Pico, the mountain, and climb. you've climbed the mountain of Pico. I've climbed the mountain several times. And that's quite an adventure. But also there's adventure here, there's whale watching, there's also dolphin watching, there's fishing, there's uh, diving, uh, there's great history, there's a UNESCO heritage site. You can drink some of the water that's coming from the eruptions, which I think is fantastic, the springs underneath the, uh, the rock. Yes. And, and the mixture, the minerals, and, and each one tastes differently. You know, you've got the bubble, you've got the sulfur, you've got all these wonderful things that, you know, it's, it's an amazing uh, gift from nature. <laughs> what I think is so amazing about these islands is each one has its own personality. They're young people, they're great cafes, they're great markets like this particular market, which people come at seven in the morning to shop, which I think is just incredible for fresh vegetables, fresh produce, it's just, you know, the food here, the cuisine is extraordinary. I love the fish and I love fish in general, but this has been an incredible experience uh, with all the different restaurants, the cafes, uh, the coffee here is unbelievable. You know, it's really a, a, an incredible treasure. And also it's four hours either way from Europe or the United States, so this makes a big difference in travel. You know, when I think of travel, I think of an idyllic place like the Azores right here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's really quite close to America, and it's a very special destination because there are nine islands. Each one has its own personality and history, and they were formed from volcanoes. The land is very fertile with picturesque lush greenery. I had several great experiences on the island that I will always cherish. Travel is an education. You have to live each day as if it's your last. My world is your world. So remember, get up, get out, and travel!